In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to this celebration of Holy Mass. And today is the Friday in week nine of Ordinary Time. It's day 71 of our nationwide lockdown. The Mass for today is offered up for the repose of the soul of Anneliese Gleason. We pray that the Lord may receive her soul into her heavenly reward. And today also we celebrate the memorial of Saint Boniface. And as you can tell by the color of my stole today, Saint Boniface was a martyr. And so we pray that the zeal which he had for proclaiming the good news, the Lord may grant it also to us, that wherever we are, the Lord may give us the strength of the Holy Spirit to continue proclaiming his good news to all people. And now as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the martyr Saint Boniface be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith he taught with his lips and sealed with his blood, and confidently profess it by our deeds. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, You have observed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, my sufferings, what befell me at Antioch and at Iconium and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. Yet from them all, the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceivers and deceived. But as for you, continue in what you learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The lovers of your law have great peace, O Lord. Though my foes and oppressors are countless, I have not swerved from your decrees. Truth is the sum of your word. All your just, just judgments are eternal. Though princes oppress me without cause, my heart reveres your word. The lovers of your law have great peace, no stumbling block for them. I awaited your salvation, O Lord. I fulfill your commands. I obey your precepts and decrees. All my ways are before you. The lovers of your law have great peace, Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, as Jesus taught in the temple, he said, How can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself, inspired by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right, till I put your enemies under my feet. David himself calls him Lord. So how can he, so how is he his son? And the great throng heard him gladly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Boniface, whose memorial we celebrate today, was born in England around the year 673. His baptismal name is Winfred, and it means a friend of peace. As a boy, Winfred studied in the Benedictine monastery and later on himself became a monk there. And for, four, for about 30 years, he lived a relatively peaceful and isolated life, studying and teaching and praying in the monastery. And while he was doing this, he had a strong desire to become a missionary. And finally, after getting permission from his abbot, he was sent out for missionary work but he encountered many obstacles. There was a war going on, and his message of the gospel was not accepted by all. He met with hostility by many non-Christians, and so he returned to his monastery, and there he further dev devoted his life to further preparing for missionary work. He never gave up his dream of proclaiming the good news to all. And he once again left his monastery, and this time he left for good. He would never return to the monastery in England. And so he set off for Rome, and he went there to seek the Pope's permission and blessing. And it was Pope Gregory II who approved Winfred's missionary zeal, and he gave him a new name, Boniface, which means one who does good. And so the newly named Boniface embarked on his missionary work once more. He went to many parts of Germany, and after many years he was ordained a bishop by the Pope himself, 
and after his ordination as bishop, he returned to Germany, where he decided to tackle the superstitious beliefs of the people. And of the many stories told of his work there, in one instance, Bishop Boniface chopped down a sacred oak tree, one which was used for the worship of Thor, the god of thunder. And he used the wood of that oak tree to build a chapel, which later became a flourishing church when people saw that their gods had failed to kill Boniface, who had chopped down their sacred oak. And growing near the sacred oak was a small fir tree, and Boniface used it as a teaching symbol. He taught the people that just as the wood of the fir tree is used by them to build their homes, so too Christ might, must be the foundation of their households. And as the leaves of the tree, the fir tree, are evergreen, so too must Christ be for them a constant light in their lives. He also said that as the fir tree points towards the sky, so too they must accept Christ as a sure guide towards heaven. And so the fir tree became a sign of Christ among the German peoples and is today a worldwide symbol of the presence of Christ, a worldwide symbol of Christmas. Boniface then went on to establish many more churches and monasteries. He organized many vibrant Christian communities, and he equipped many people for mission. And Boniface was constantly traveling, encouraging people, building churches, appointing leaders, and working for peace among political leaders. And because of all this hard work, the Pope made him Archbishop of all Germany. And at the age of nearly eight years old, when most bishops would have retired, many ideas were still in Boniface's head. He still wanted to preach the gospel on that, at that first mission where his efforts were met with failure more than 40 years earlier. And so he set off with 52 companions on this evangelizing mission, which was to be his last. And in the year 754, at Pentecost Day, while he was on his way to administer the sacrament of confirmation, Boniface was struck down with a sword. And so he died as he lived, preaching the good news to people. And on this first week of our season in ord of ordinary time, we pray that the Lord may grant us the zeal that Boniface had, the zeal for spreading the gospel. We pray that we too may not give up, but may, might trust in the Lord, who said that he would be with us till the end of time, and who empowered us with the gift of his Holy Spirit. We pray that our efforts at evangelizing might bear much fruit. And so we turn today to St. Boniface, looking at his example and asking for his intercession. Let us now present our petitions to the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, the successor of St. Peter, that the Lord may continue to make him a rock on which he can build up his church in our time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for vocations, that willing young hearts may take up the challenge of missionary work and priestly ministry, 
and the power to bind and loose in Christ's name, after the example of St. Boniface. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for missionaries, that the Lord may stand by their side and give them his strength, so that through them the proclamation might be completed and all nations may hear the good news. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who work for justice and for peace, that the Lord will give them the courage that Boniface had to finish their race and to keep their faith in his divine help. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our beloved dead, whose lives have been poured out like a libation, that they might be purified to receive the crown of righteousness from the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray our prayer of Pentecost in the pandemic. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of God. Come with your peace, your power, and your light. Come with forgiveness, courage, and hope. Come, Spirit of God, unite us with the risen Jesus. Turn us again to the Father of Jesus. Together they pour you out daily into our hearts. Come now to our suffering world, sick with a killing virus, and everywhere threatened with silent death, but most cruelly among your poorest children. Come to our first responders and our doctors, our nurses and hospital staff, the men and women who preserve the civic order and protect us from fire and bring us our food. Come now to the hearts and minds of scientists seeking a vaccine for the pandemic, to all who support their work, bringing to it in equal measure patience and commitment. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, and by your grace, May we be set afire with the flame of your love, through which Saint Boniface overcame every bodily torture. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
I will use preface one of Holy Martyrs and the second Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Boniface, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, it shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the, power of heaven, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until we come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Budi our Bishop, and Duncan his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory is yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us pause now for a moment and ask the Lord for the gift of his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. I invite you now, my brothers and sisters, to make an act of spiritual communion. Ask the Lord to...
come and visit you with his grace and to dwell in your hearts. As we look forward to that day when we can gather again to, gain, again to receive him in holy communion. O oh Jesus, I turn to you believing in your real presence in the blessed sacrament. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you now in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart, purify it, sanctify it, and make it like yours. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which rendered your blessed martyr Boniface faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the glory and joy of the saints, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless you with unending blessings. Amen. Freed through their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of their holy way of life, May you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. So that together with all, you may possess the joys of the homeland where Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us remain in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.